Okay, so we're looking at unit two, new packet. We're talking about Ian's cat jumping in the air. That's a long jump, eight seconds. Ian's cat is very nimble. They jumped 30, th two feet, okay? <laughs> Three stories. <laughs> She was really scared. She jumped up three stories and then fell down three stories, landed on her feet. We were all good. Took her eight seconds. You're welcome. Okay, so you guys, if I say, hey, what's her average rate of change from one second to five seconds? And again, this is when it gets a little funky because this is talking from second one to second five. So let's go ahead and name our axes a little bit. We're talking, these are her seconds. And I would, should have said that this is talking about feet over here. Okay. Inches? That sounds no fun at all. She jumped 32 feet, okay? <laughs> his, his cat is, has got like, uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles, okay? Okay. So <laughs> here's the deal. From one second, if you guys could go ahead and put that mark on our, um, on our graph, when T is one, what do you think that Y is? 14. I wrote T instead of one. One, 14. What about at five seconds? Five. He was at, she was at 30 feet. What's your cat's name, Ian? Uh, mine's T. 2D? That's cute. Like 2D Freedy? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think it's adorable. Okay. So you guys, if they're asking for the average rate of change, they're asking for just the slope the rate that the cat was jumping from one to five seconds. So we can draw what in what we call a secant line. The average rate of change, when we see this, we're just looking for slope. Slope, what do we know about slope? Back in literally algebra one, you learned slope is just, yeah, change of y over the change in x, over my interval. What, um, check this out, I gave you the function up here. Could I technically say, what are my x's? What are my x bounds that we're going from what x to what x? Yeah, so if I did 1 minus 5 on the bottom, could I technically do f of 1 minus f of 5 on the top? Isn't f of x just fancy for y? But we know if we're doing 1 minus 5, we've already put some stuff into my, um, onto the graph. What is f of 1? 14. Minus, what is f of 5? 30 all over 1 minus 5. Guess what? On the AP test, you're done right there. Don't simplify it. We're only going to make mistakes. If we did simplify it, if it was a multiple choice, though, what would we get? Four. Negative, whoa, that is not negative 26. Negative 16 over negative 4 is 4. If we're looking for its rate of change, we did the change of y over the change of x. So it would be 4 feet per second. Awesome. So I'm going to say four foots per second. That's 2D's rate of change just from one to five seconds. What do you think? Yeah. Now my question is, what if it says, hey, what's the instantaneous rate of change? And you're like, what? What's this new word? This new word is calculus right here. Okay. This new word is saying it wants to know how fast, what was the rate of change for 2D? 2D, uh, Ian's cat, at one second. And that's where calculus comes in, because you agree what we just did to find a rate of change was the change in Y over the change in X. We did, we used two different points to figure that out. And in calculus, they want to know, nah, I don't want to know over that time gap. I want to know at this second. So let me show you this. So we can say, okay, the instantaneous rate of change based on the graph, based on the graph, would be 12 feet per second. And if you want to draw that, what that's going to look like on my graph is I'm going to put my point when x is 1, and I'm going to try to draw a tangent line. And what a tangent line is, is it's a line that just touches the graph, boop, right at that point. It doesn't go through the graph twice. It only goes through it once. A secant line always goes through it twice. A tangent line only touches the graph once. Does this look like it potentially has a slope of about 12? This kind of look like we're going up 24 over two. Yeah, there's, no, 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 up 20. Okay, because I, I drew a terrible tangent line is really what it came down to, right? But this looks way steeper than that one. You okay with that? Okay, so let's 
take this further. Let's go look at, so we said at one second, my instantaneous rate of change appears to be 12 feet per second. Again, this was all from the graph. I'm not expecting us to do anything by hand. What about at two feet per second? Let's look at the graph. My slope here looks about like eight feet per second. Come on. Man, this is all messed up. Eight feet per second. Anyone have a guess at three? Does anyone remember what a negative slope refers? I mean, a negative uh, rate in like your math days? How would we, how do we use, I'm sorry, science days? If my velocity is negative, it's just going to the left or backwards or down, right? As opposed to up, up would be a positive velocity, forward would be a positive velocity, negative is just a negative velocity. 2D is falling at this point, right? 2D is falling back to the ground. She's gonna be fine. She's the Hulk, okay? Okay, so now to generalize, let me get rid of this stuff here, boop. Man, my iPad is so mad at me. Okay, um, to generalize, let's go take a peek at this picture. This is very AP-esque. Let's name this bound over here. We're gonna name this bound A, and I'm gonna name this bound B. No, 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 I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm gonna say there's some horizontal distance here, H. So if we start at A, I add some horizontal distance H, what would this point be? A plus B. Yes, okay. So if this is A, what would that point be? F of A. And if this, is, this point is A plus H, what would this point be? F of A plus H, which is gross looking, right? That's allowed to be gross. Okay, so now it says, in general, the average rate of change over the interval from A to B, we're including those points, from, oh, I did not say to B. What is my Y about, my, my other X here? It's not B, it's A plus H. A plus H is, can we write slope, you guys? How do I write the change in Y over the change in X with these points? We can do this. F of, yes, F of A plus H. Minus F of A. That was just Y minus Y right there, you guys. All over A plus H minus A. Do you guys agree? We just did Y minus Y over X minus X. How many people are like, uh, excuse me, can we simplify the denominator? Yeah, I agree. Let's simplify that denominator. So right next to this, I'm going to say we got F of A plus H minus F of A all over H. And then you guys, so that's the average rate of change. You've done that since algebra. Now this year, we're going to talk about that instantaneous rate of change. How fast was 2D falling or flying <laughs> at one second? Not the average, but at that second. Or how fast was she falling at seven seconds, right before she nimbly hit the ground? Okay. She hit the ground is the wrong. Landed softly. Okay. 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 So that's why we've had to deal with calculus, because we need to be able to say, hey, as this little horizontal distance shrinks here, as this horizontal distance goes to zero, then we can be able to find this, the rate that 2D is jumping from the ground. And it's just still the slope, change of Y over the change in X. So this right here is what we're going to use just for a little bit till we get to 2, 5. Really just 2, 2, and just 2... Two, we got to talk about that. Yeah, not even two, three. We just have to use this till two, two. And then uh, I've got a much shorter way. But so this is saying the instantaneous rate of change of a function at X is A. I'm going to say A is my X value. When X is A, it's just, hey, that horizontal distance is going to approach zero. And then I'm going to be able to find the slope of that tangent line. Let's flip that page. This is just going to be another way to write it. Check this out. This is just another form to find the average rate of change. This time I'm going to say, hey, this x value is still a, so we can label this a, but I'm going to name this x value instead of a plus h, I'm going to just name it x this time. So if this is the point a, what's its y value equivalent? f of a. What about this y value's equivalent if x is x? f of x. So it says, if we're still talking that interval now from A to X, from one X value to another X value, to find that average rate of change, if I were to draw my secant line, just to connect those two, 
that average rate of change is just slope. What would it be here? What minus what? F of x minus f of a all over x minus a. And you guys, just so you know, this in AP terms is called a difference quotient. Do you agree we're subtracting and dividing? They call that a difference quotient. You're never going to have to write those words, but just in case I use it again. Difference, subtraction, quotient, division. To find the instantaneous rate of change at the moment that x is a. At that moment, what do you think is happening? What kind of limit notation would we say this time? As what approaches a? As that x term approaches a. As my x approaches a, we can still find that slope, which is f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. There's our calculus for it. I really hit this hard. Um, I think, okay, yeah, it can't hurt to put this on. The average rate of change, you guys, that is just the slope of the secant line. over an interval, you know, from one point to another. That's the average rate of change. That's what we did all the way back in algebra. The instantaneous rate of change, how fast is 2D rising at three seconds? That is going to be the slope of the, and I've got a birthday cake flavored Hershey kiss who can remember what this line is called. Yeah, oh my gosh, I guess I got to give everybody one. The slope of the tangent line at, at, so this one's at a point, not over an interval. I want to know how fast is 2D falling at seven seconds. You tell I really wanted to hit this home. Is that in your notes for you or no? Yeah, yeah it's already there. Great. So I just put this over there. We've written it a hundred times. Let's move on.